Hello, I am Janine Turner, founder of Constituting America. Welcome to Constituting America's annual 90-day study. This year, it is entitled The Genius of America, A Journey into Our Republic, a study on Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America. And here is a quote by Alexis de Tocqueville. Quote, There is, in fact, a very perilous passage in the life of democratic peoples. When the taste for material enjoyments develops in one of these peoples more rapidly than enlightenment and the habits of freedom. End quote. This essay is entitled Introduction to Democracy in America by Alexis de Tocqueville. Why Every American Should Read a Book by a Frenchman. Guest essayist, Pete Peterson. In the introduction to their translation of Alexis de Tocqueville's Democracy in America, the renowned Harvard historian Harvey Mansfield and his late wife, Delba Winthrop, describe the volume as, quote, at once the best book ever written on democracy and the best book ever written on America, end quote. Though written almost two centuries ago, the book's insights on American culture and exceptionalism could not be more timely. Though coming in at 700 plus pages in the Mansfield Winthrop edited edition, it's well worth an investment of time and study by every American. Alexis de Tocqueville was a French aristocrat and government official who landed in the United States in 1831 with his friend Gustave de Beaumont, ostensibly to study America's prison system. But his plan soon changed as he encountered a culture so different than his own. In the first paragraph of the book, de Tocqueville lays the foundation for his overarching argument about the country's exceptional nature by declaring that what struck him most about America in those first few days of the visit was the, quote, equality of conditions, end quote. He goes on to argue that, quote, this enormous influence this primary fact exerts on the course of society. It gives a certain direction to the public spirit, a certain turn to the laws, and particular habits to the governed, end quote. By equality of conditions, de Tocqueville did not mean to say that everyone lived in equal circumstances, but something closer to equality of opportunity. From this firm foundation, de Tocqueville perceives the major cultural factor, what he calls mores, that appears to be necessary to support a country where equal opportunity reigned as the central economic dynamic. He quickly discovers that Americans hold to a doctrine he calls, quote, self-interest rightly understood, end quote a worldview that dictates a certain degree of reliance on neighbors and community in order to accomplish tasks ranging from building churches to roadways. Remember, at this stage in America's history, the federal government had little power to determine local affairs. As de Tocqueville writes, quote, they show with complacency how an enlightened regard for themselves constantly prompts them to assist each other and inclines them willingly to sacrifice a portion of their time and property, end quote, for the common good. Comparing with his native Europe, de Tocqueville is also shocked to see religion and government mix in a way that's actually beneficial rather than a source of bloody conflict. Unlike Europe, America did not have a national religion, but ironically, this contributed to a flourishing of faith in the country. From developing Americans' political skills by serving in local church administrative councils to working with faith-based nonprofits, 
De Tocqueville concludes, quote, Religion, which among Americans never mixes directly in the government of society, should therefore be considered as the first of their political institutions. For if it does not give them the taste for freedom, it singularly facilitates their use of it. End quote. This willingness of Americans to collaborate through nonprofit and ad hoc civic organizations is what de Tocqueville describes as, quote, associativeness, end quote. And it's a major distinction between this burgeoning republic and Europe. From temperance associations to foreign missionary support organizations, de Tocqueville sees Americans put their faith into action even as they respond to local needs that would have been the purview of government in Europe. He observes, quote, Everywhere that, at the head of a new undertaking, you see the government in France or a great lord in England, count on it that you will perceive an association in the United States, end quote. As we conclude our whirlwind review of democracy in America, it's worth noting that de Tocqueville's last chapters in the book can be seen as prophetic in describing the future of American and other democracies' society. It's not an optimistic perspective and one grounded in the Frenchman's belief that with the increasing wealth he foresees coming to this country, Americans will gradually withdraw from their associations, their faith, and their community spirit. De Tocqueville looks to the future. Quote, there is, in fact, a very perilous passage in the life of democratic peoples when the taste for material enjoyments develops in one of these peoples more rapidly than enlightenment and the habits of freedom, end quote. De Tocqueville's fears that as Americans earn the material benefits of freedom, they will look to government not to protect our liberties, but to protect our stuff. He describes this dynamic, quote, each of them desires that it, central government, aid him as an exception in the special affair that reoccupies him, and he seeks to attract the action of the government to his side, all the while wanting to shrink it for everyone else, end quote. It is here where de Tocqueville wonders whether the, quote, self-interest rightly understood, end quote, which drew Americans into civil society and community would become, quote, self-interest wrongly understood, end quote, a selfishness and withdrawal from the public square. For future leaders, de Tocqueville sees that, quote, individual independence and local liberties will always be the product of art, end quote. Are we seeing these trend lines today? I think these concerns and the importance of citizen engagement are vital to consider during this election year and beyond. This essay was written by Pete Peterson. Pete Peterson is the Dean of the Pepperdine School of Public Policy, holding the Braun Family Dean's Chair and is Senior Fellow at the Davenport Institute. He is a leading national speaker and writer on issues related to civic participation and the use of technology to make government more responsive and transparent. <laughs>